Hey, how's it going everybody? Um, today's episode we're just going to do kind of a recap of the shed season. I haven't been able to get out for probably two and a half weeks just busy with like work stuff. Um, but I'm really excited to show off kind of the sheds that we found in total. Kind of do a recap and where I found success um, finding sheds. So... Without further ado, we'll get into a couple of them. So, the first set that I found of the year were these. I was looking for a shed buck and I couldn't find his one side, but then I ended up finding this buck instead. So this is either from a year or two years ago and they were laying probably six feet apart um, and probably 600 yards from like a field, um, just in a cool little sanctuary um, away from people um, and just nobody had shed hunted it. It was public land um, and someone missed them. So that was pretty cool. They're really unique. I don't know if you can see, but they like swoop in really weird. And I ended up finding his this year's which is really cool. So, found that guy, and then this is him this year. I found this set. You guys already probably know the story of this one. So, it was about 100 yards apart. It has the swooping inwards too. And I know it's the same buck because of photos. So this is the web brow buck. So, this one's pretty cool. Um, found it in a guy's yard actually. Um, Thought about just grabbing him, but I decided no, I needed to ask him, so talked to him and actually got him, so that was kind of cool. And then after that buck, let's see, we found this guy. So not sheds obviously, but two different antlers off this buck. So sadly he died um, not too far away from a hiking trail. Don't know what caused it, but his whole spine was like, attached, so I had to euro him, and then I just cut it off. Um, super sad, but it was definitely pretty fresh. The antlers were still dark. I do know that I've gotten trail camera pictures of probably 10 different coyotes, or at least a group of four of them. Uh, so some of those coyotes might have gotten to him, which is kind of sad, but... It's kind of cool, he's kind of palmated and stuff, so he would have been a really good buck, but sometimes that's just how it goes. Um, can't have too many bucks or they'll shrink a little bit. And then I found a bunch of oldies like this. These are, these are pretty cool. I know that they're chewed down, but they look pretty similar to some of these other bucks that I found just based on like the ridge marks, you never know if that's the same buck, um, but I mean, it fits right inside it. All the ridging's the same. The bases are identical. It even has like the same holes. Um, so you never know. And that leads me to the biggest set of the year is this buck. So this is a really cool buck. I looked for this buck sh sheds for like a month. Um, he's got holes in his beams on this side. Um, He's only probably 120, I think it was like 125 inches, 123 inches. He's not a crazy scoring buck, but it's cool just because I have hundreds of photos of this deer. I've seen him in person, I passed him. He's also extremely um, easy to know that it is this buck because he has a huge like hunchback arch on his back. So he's definitely at least five. Um, at first I thought he was older just because of like the wounds and kind of how big he is, but I think he's he's just five. I don't think he's older than that. Um, but yeah, he's an unbelievable deer. He's he's really cool. He's got thick tines, thick bases, but nothing to write home about. But that was one of my biggest New England sets ever. So that was a pretty cool buck. And to have all those videos and passing him and hunting him, it's gonna make for a cool story. So this one, don't judge me too hard. It's uh, still a work in progress. I'm still fixing it up. But I found this is my biggest deadhead ever um, when it comes to like whitetails. Um, so this was 
on the same property as the Hunchback buck. Um, just a super cool, super cool buck that I found dead. He's got this kicker on the base. Um, the tip was broken off. This tip was broken off and then this beam was broken off right here. Um, this tip was broken off right here. This was worn down. This was worn down and chewed by squirrels. Um, but the bases were still really good intact, so I tried to restore it a little bit, and I'm gonna color it up. It's just stained for right now, but super cool buck. He's a he's a pretty big one. But uh, yeah, you never know what happened to him. And then going on from there, the coolest shed of the year. This is the buck that I killed actually this year, the 160. So this is him years before um, based on like the trail camera information that I have um, just crazy so his beam is the same fits identical um, and it's only a half a mile or a mile or something 1.2 miles from where I shot him um, and this is where he came from during the summertime so pretty incredible um, that's not a far distance at all especially in New England but his his beams are identical, um, the bases are identical, and yeah, it's just it's just crazy to see it like fit in perfectly compared to the other um, antlers actually on the rack. When I, I'll put a comparison of like the photos, um, but it's just cool that I found it after I killed him because um, usually it's before, so that was a first for me. But I had trail camera pictures of him that I could put it against, so it's kind of cool. So this one was just a random find. It was absolutely shoved into the dirt, so it was completely hidden. Um, and then I pulled it out and saw that it actually had a brow tine, but it's kind of cool. It has like a sweeping down uh, tine, kind of unique. You don't see that too often. And then from there, this one, New Hampshire deer. Found that couple months ago but it's technically part of the shed season um cool find not like a gigantic deer and then the biggest one of the year is this puppy 67 inch um just tank of a deer he has almost a six inch base um big tight rack three brow tines just as cool as it gets character. This thing has been chewed by porcupines and other animals to death, but just a super cool deer. It's the size of my head. It's literally, a, can't even get my two fingers around it. But yeah, just an awesome deer. And all these for the most part were near hemlocks um, and near thermal cover. So what I do is I go on Onyx and I do like the off leaves layer. And then I also go in and turn on the coniferous uh, layer so I can be able to see uh, where these deer are gonna hold up to like keep their themselves warm in the winter months. Um, and so you can know where there's not gonna be snow because a lot of times they'll, they'll go to bed under those places in the winter but not at other times of the year. So you can kind of find them in certain wintering areas or yards if you will in the big woods. Um, but it's the same way with suburbs. They just like that buffer zone of like a couple hundred yards from houses. Um, but I have a couple more spots I want to hit down in Mass. Um, and a couple spots in New Hampshire that I've been waiting. A lot of the bucks don't shed till like the 16th of March. Um, so I've been kind of waiting until then. Um, so I need to get out. But let's see if there's any more. I think. That's all from here. I have a couple in my room that are smaller, but in total ended up finding 20 antlers, which for New England in one season, that's pretty incredible. It's hard to find antlers. I mean, in between finding all of these versus finding this one, I think it was like a 30 to 40 mile gap of like seven different trips or whatever shed hunting um, to try to find an antler. So it's not easy by any means, but it just takes time and you can find those big ones if you keep walking and keep walking. That's You have to put on a lot of miles. I mean, there's a guy in New Jersey that found 50-something, and I think he's put on a 1,000 miles, which I don't care enough 
to do that. <laughs> That's a lot of time to do that. And uh, yeah, I, I love shed hunting, but not enough to walk a thousand miles for 50 antlers. So just, I don't have the desire to do that. Plus the bucks that I, I want. Um, a lot of times they're shedding in places where I'm not going to be able to hunt them or kill them. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something. Just a short video of kind of explaining my shed hunting recap of the year. And if we find any more, we'll post them. See ya.